students, welcome back to the second part of the lecture and we are talking about disease and tree, right? And I gave you this table as you can see on a screen that the week data for the two weeks, day 1 to day 14 and decisions has to be made whether we can go and play tennis or not and that depends on this tree structure, okay? That is what is called the tree for decision tree for playing tennis. So, you can have three types of weather and sunny or workers and rainy and if it is sunny if it is you can have a humidity can be high or normal, it is overcast humidity is already high as you know, but still it is not sunny that it is not be hot. If it is rainy you can have winds with rain like weak or strong. So, still whether you play tennis or not depends on whether the wind is strong or weak that is how the whole decisions are made right. So, you can follow this tree and make all the decisions possible you do not need the data. So, DT is exactly like that. So, let me just go back to the board and explain what is that. It is like a tree like structure and you see I have drawn one, that is one root, it is like a family tree, many of you can see that, basically like a family tree. And you know this is supervised learning uh, process and you know what that does it do it, basically uh, it is used for approximating. discrete valued target prediction, remember this word discrete valued target prediction. It is not continuous valued, a discrete valued target prediction, you want to predict something and by using this approach. So, there are two entities here in this structure or let me write it here. There are two entities, very important entities. So, what are they? One is the node, correct? Second one is the leaf. A tree you have leaf and node, right? If I if you draw a tree like that, then you have trunks and on the trunks you have leaves like this and each leaf start with a node that is what it is. So, it has node and leaves okay? this is a tree I am not drawing the whole tree you can draw it yourself and so node is where data split you can see that data split in the node. Okay? And leave is where decisions are made. It is provide decision or outcome. Remember that there is nothing else in this structure. These are the two important things one has to remember node and the leaf. So, if you want to decide that here you will see the, the nodes are basically humidity, wind, outlook, correct? That is what is, they are the node, that is what the data split actually. And then leaves are actually like high humidity, low humidity, strong wind, low weak wind, that is what you have to understand. Now, there are branches, right? You can see there are many branches I have drawn, 1, 2, 3, 4 branches I have drawn from this. So, each branch, each branch tells you what? each branch tells you something important right it descends from from node corresponding to one possible value for this attribute okay descends from node corresponding to one possible value of attribute or feature It can be more than one also, but let us consider for the simplicity one possible attribute. By the way, you hope I understand attributes here is actually like uh, sunny, overcast, rainy, okay, that is these are attributes. What kind of days it is? So, it can be either sunny, it can be either overcast, or it can be either rainy also, that is what. So, therefore, each branch is coming from node corresponding to one attribute, like here, each branch is coming from each 
sunny overcast or rainy right similarly here also it much is coming from this one this another this one this another right so there are things coming like that please remember that and each node in the tree specifies a test of some anti attributes okay so nodes you already we discussed nodes are basically splitting data each nodes basically specifies what test of some attributes test of some attributes that's what each node does so dt can handle both uh, alpha and numerical data that's what it is it can handle both categorical data as well as numerical data that you have to understand very easily uh, carefully so now let's that's that's the uh, routine structure of a uh, daisy entry uh, you have to understand there's a node there's a leaf these are the two important parameters and a node data split you could see that and in the leaves the, the is provide decisions or the outcomes and each branch basically is descends from a node corresponding to one possible attribute and nodes will specify the test of the attribute right so most widely used and practical methods remember daisy entry and it gives i told you it gives you discrete value target functions the learned functions is represented by a daisy entry and daisy entry basically can also be represented as a set of if and then rules right that to improve the human readability we we'll go back to last one if it's humid whether you will play or not it depends on higher normal if it's high no if it's normal yes that's what it is so therefore it it basically providing a what it's a specific set of rules and it is very robust to all kinds of data noisy data and you know it gets capable to learning disjunctive expressions that means disjunctive means not connected you know conjunction right opposite of conjunction is disjunction disjunctive expression is can used and it is robust to any kind of noisy data that's the greatness of this entry and in material science data may be very noisy in some cases that's why you can use uh, this so uh, this entry classifies instances by sorting them from root to the tree leaves right you can see on this board blackboard that there is a root that is the first picture on the top and then you have it is going to some leaf nodes and uh, each node has some specifics of attributes and each branch corresponds to one or possible values of this attribute so i i can go back to this diagram again and again and each node is specifying particular attribute like humidity and wind correct and uh, each branch is talking about specific value attribute humidity high or normal so wind strong or weak so therefore uh, specific features let's talk about again and let's see saturday morning outlook is sunny temperature is hot humidity is high wind is strong so what will be the answer it is sunny that means you should play sunny tennis temperature is hot humidity is high wind is strong obviously answer is no right very clearly you can see that so answer is no so that's the way the decisions are made in in the in the daisy entry structure so each path corresponds to a conjunction of attributes connection of attributes right and that's what if it's sunny the humidity is high answer is no if it is sunny wind is strong answer is no whichever you go you reaches the answer no right and only the overcast is different it doesn't talk about humidity or wind that's completely says yes so that's the state for branch but otherwise sunny and rainy both are actually long interlinked branch so this entity is represented junction of conjunctions disjunction of conjunction of, of constraint on the attribute word. okay let's not talk about all these big words but it, it talks about conjunction of attribute sets sunny humidity uh, rainy wind speed so there are two attributes they are conjuncted or together there are many examples let me give you this example also let's talk about whether you somebody buys a computer or not that's very important example for the people who sells computer first i divide the set of people in terms of ages below 30 years of age 30 and 40 and above 
you know why people are we are putting over 40 because people, the many of these companies think over 40 means people are old they will not require computers right that's why so below 30 whether it's a student if it's a student no no right you see yes yes let's see what is what is let's talk about income if student has low income it doesn't buy high income he buys between 30 and 40 people have money because they already got employed jobs so therefore they will buy computers above 40 people will think you know what the what about the credit ratings correct the credit ratings oh sorry i am talking about bank actually a bank is doing that whether they are going to give loans or not uh, this is uh, basically a bank job they divide people in three tier groups age groups 30 below 30 30 and 40 and 40 and first below 30 they talk whether they are students and it is student uh, they say no credit rating even it is fair still they will say no credit rating still excellent still say no always because students they think they cannot pay back and uh, if it is 30 and 40 does not matter of credit rating you always give the loan if it is above 40 they look at credit rating with excellence then they do not give any loan and if it is fair they give loan ok very interesting right. Let's, this is something like a, a information people get from the, this table and plot it. And I will talk about ID3 little later. ID3 is basically a uh, you know special type of this entry algorithm. So, you know, so therefore, basic algorithm is simply like a what is called a greedy algorithm, very interesting term. Tree is constructed in a top down approach, a recursive top down approach, uh, divide and conquer manner. At the start, all the training examples are the root, and attributes are categorical, they are well defined. They can be continuous valued or they can be discretized in advance, but they are categorical. Examples are partitions recursively based on the selected attributes. It has to be recursively because otherwise you cannot distribute in a tree like structure. And test attributes are selected on the basis of heuristic or statistical measures, like heuristic means some. Uh, non numerical values statistic means some numerical values ok we will talk about it what is information gain ok how we can do that conditions for stopping the partitioning all example samples of a given node print the same class there are no remaining attributes of further partitioning then only stop a uh, majority voting is always employed ok and that is what it is so therefore you know this is exactly what recent modeling has to be done everything is put together here so, the main question is which attributes should be tested at the root of the tree and like in case of weather we have there is no choice we have to talk about sunny or uh, rainy or, or cloudy right. But second thing main important aspect will be numerically how do you do there are two ways one can do is one is called information gain other one is called entropy. So, quantity measure of worth of any attributes is considered as an information gain how well a given attribute separates the training data ok. Information gain measures the expected reduction well that is what entropy comes in the picture. So, you know this is the whole uh, bigger picture of this learning algorithm as you see temperature cold mild hot outlook sunny overcast rainy if it is sunny play temperature is cool play tennis overcast play tennis rainy windy strong or weak. Now, mild weather outlook sunny raining overcast always and windy then you do not play strong winds weak winds you play. If it is rainy it is if it is humid and you know rainy things will be humid only sunny can also be humid but anyway the tree is like that the rainy is humidity is high ok or humidity it is it is normal windy or strong ok. So, this is the whole tree structure right one of the tree structure I do not want to give details of that. So, now take let us decide how how actually what are the parameters which allow you to uh, you know uh, do this GST divide into different nodes and the lips the two important parameters which are there one is called entropy it characterizes basically impurity of any example ok. So, that means let us talk about how does it split ok the data on the right side let us do that how does it know that it has to split data. So, how does d t split data. 
it depends upon two parameters one is called entropy other one is called information gain okay that two parameters which are important what is entropy entropy is basically is defined here but let me give you examples of that let's say in a data set s in a data set s let's say data set it the uh, the set of class class you understand right class means this these are the class each one is one class set of class is x capital x correct and let us also say proportion of proportion of element in x to the total number of elements in S is P x. In the set you have total number of elements, so let us say certain value 100 and in the class, in the data set you have different classes possible. So, one class is x, in that x class the proportion of elements to the number of elements in S total element S P x, then entropy is defined as H s is basically defined as what summation I hope you remember this so remember this this small this x belongs to set s right the x belong to set s that is why it is that. So, this is basically a mathematical symbol now minus p x log of 2 p x this is log base 2 right that is what it is. So, this is the definition of entropy. So, every time you are calculating this proportion the proportion of elements in x in the total number of elements in the whole set. So, whole set is this now in class x let us say class x how many elements are there I think 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 elements are there right but in this total one there are many elements are there. So, you take divide 9 by total elements that is what you do then you can calculate that. So, that is your p x and take minus p x lot of 2 p x remember p x will be a fraction and entropy cannot be negative. So, that why take a negative sign. So, log of p x will be negative this negative sign will be cancelled by this negative sign and then you multiply by p x that gives you the entropy. Okay, that is how the entropy is different. If entropy is positive, uh, or sorry, entropy is higher compared to suppose entropy is higher here compared to there, then you split the data. If entropy is decreasing, then do not split the data. That is the decision one has to make. So, entropy specifies, you know, just like material science, uh, entropy specifies some minimum uh, number of bits of information needed to encode a classification of an arbitrary set S. Let us take information required for classification. This is basically 9 by 14, that same thing I have given you, uh, that is how it is done. And this is how the entropy plots looks like. You see at 0.5 entropy has the maximum value, same thing like in material science also. So, entropy is a key parameter decide on decide which decides on the whether data will be split or not, very important, it is basically a very key parameter. So, that is exactly how I define entropy, this equation. P i is basically proportion of this x belonging to class i. Rather, we have defined proportion of the elements in x in the set S compared to total number of elements present in the S, right? That is what this is called general definition of entropy. And you know, entropy is uh, as I said is widely used. It also tells you uh, minimum number of bits of information needed to encode the classification of any arbitrary, arbitrary sets. So, it tells you minimum number of uh, 
number of what bits bits is information or data basically of information minimum number of bits of information required to encode the classification of any arbitrary data set that is the basically thing important for entropy. Hence, this can be used, but what about information gain? Well, for information gain to define let us assume. So, first uh, okay, we can do it here. Let us assume that uh, A is the attribute or feature, remember attribute is feature, attribute this that attribute that splits S, the sub data set S and let us talk, let us also assume T, T is the subset. of S, the subset of S generated by splitting S S is a data set and S T is a subset by using A, A is the attribute attribute can be age, attribute can be income, attribute can be credit score also anything attribute. In the example I give you using A, now P T, if I define P moles T as a proportion of, of elements or num proportion of elements, proportion of elements in T the subset T to total number of elements in set in data set S capital S then information gain or I G I G is written like this H S H S we have written already, this is the in definition of entropy, H S minus sigma small t which is sub belongs to subset uh, belongs to t basically P t log of P t. Since we are using mean negative signs here, we do not need to use negative signs there and this can be written like this S of S by A. Okay, so, that is what is called information gain. So, every time you do this splitting information gain must be positive otherwise you cannot do splitting. So, that is the uh, two important parameters which are used to decide how we are going to split the data. One is called entropy other one is called the information gain. So, please uh, take a note of these two because they are very vital when you want to split data in a decision tree. Every time you have to calculate that. Actually, you do not calculate, Python will calculate, but still you should know that how this is done, very important concepts. So, we will stop here, we will come back to it, uh, you know, we will discuss in the next lecture about ANN, but we will come back to and give some perspectives of decision tree more whatever required. Thank you.